Will plays Alan Gamble, a forensic accountant, accountant. Right. who uh, in his previous life was a pimp. <laughs> and uh, he's married to one of the most beautiful women on the world. And uh, he doesn't seem to recognize her beauty. Right. Not quite aware. And uh, through uh, a lot of persistence, my character, I force Will to go out on the streets at gunpoint. But then he is a, he's a crafty fellow, so he kind of convinces me that we should go after white collar crime. Mm -hmm. And um, he turns into a star detective. Mark on. plays on thick, baby. Detective Terry Hoyts, who is a uh, he's a, a guy from the you know tough side of the streets, knows how to handle himself in a fight, knows how to handle himself in any sort of situation. You, you know, a man's man, a cop's cop. However, he has been uh, he's been put on the sidelines of any sort of detective work because of an unfortunate incident. And he is, from that point on, it was a, a black mark on his career. He was, he was headed straight for the top. Uh, subsequently, he is paired with me, Alan Gamble, and uh, he just is dying to get back into the streets. And I have no interest in it whatsoever. I'm shocked that this guy would have this girl, and I, I still don't believe it, and I feel like she should be with my character. And, um, you know, kind of like secretly hoping that something bad happens to him so I can be there and comfort her. Right. Sheila and I met uh, in the Emergency. ER of a hospital. I was suffering from a severe case of rectal poison ivy. <laughs> um, and she was an attended, attending physician. She was a doctor and a backup dancer for the Knicks. Um, Ooh. Just that, you know, very typical combination. Um, and she immediately uh, uh, fell in love with me. Uh, she said, even though he was also a pimp, she said she, she was the told that there was a drugged out pimp in the ER and she saw me and she said, this guy's not a pimp. He's a lovely man. And a beautiful romance began from that point on. The lion and tuna scene, if we'll call it that, um, kind of the first half, Mark had this huge monologue about if, we were if I were a lion and you were a tuna I would swim out in the middle of the ocean, ocean and eat you eat me and so then Adam had me just turn around and come up with a whole defense um, and yeah that was my kind of response was completely improvised uh, and, and it just goes on this whole scenario is built about a uh, a whole community of tunas that swim upstream and develop, build breathing apparatus and actually turn around and start to aggressively hunt lions. Um, <laughs> and anyway, it's kind of a, I, I think it's kind of a pivotal scene in the sense that Mark is really in my face and the two characters kind of show that, okay, it's not going to be this typical uh, they're both going to push each other back. That that one isn't going to always have the upper hand, and uh, there's going to be. Yeah, a kind you know, of give he, and take. the only person that he actually tries to get confrontational with is my <laughs> character. Like everybody else just stomps on him and abuses him, and he just takes it. But every but time I try reason, to give it to him, yeah. he just wants to give it right back. I just yeah. complete joy for me and for my character. I just thought it was like the funniest thing because we still weren't friends yet. You know, I was working with him and I was and I was tolerating him because we were still getting involved in something other than sitting at the desk and me playing solitaire and him working on his calculator. But and I have uh, I've previously discharged my weapon in the office. I was convinced by the other guys that it was okay to do what's called a desk pop, where you shoot your gun off. <laughs> Even though, against my better judgment, it doesn't sound right to me, but I want to be—I want to be one of the guys. 
So I have my, my gun is taken away and I'm given a wooden gun. Then we get reprimanded again and I, my wooden gun gets taken away. I think I'm getting my real gun back again, but then I'm just handed a rape whistle. And, and he goes, just blow it and somebody with a gun will come and help come you. And help you. <laughs> so it's a very sad moment for me, but, but Terry kind of enjoys it. Yeah.